You know, one of my favorite lines from the movie Help, the Beatles movie Help, was yeah. they're in the studio and there's the <laughs> they're sawing out underneath Ringo's drum kit, and they call in from the control room, and the guy's like, "Boys, are you?" Buzzing and John and Paul are like, oh no, not me, thanks. <laughs> yeah, like, but that's not the kind of buzzing we are talking about. We are talking about the kind of buzzing on your guitar that drives you freaking bonkers. Yeah, drives you insane. I wish we were talking about that. <laughs> the fun buzz, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we're talking about buzz on the neck and what causes that. Okay. And there are so many variables in this video, so we're gonna try our best to go through every single one. But yeah, it's a very common problem. Yeah. Um, almost every guitar I work on, there's some form of buzz. Okay. And it's about tracking it down. But this is, this is gonna be a deep one, right? This is a deep cut. Man, so your head will be spinning or buzzing by the end of it. Oh, I'll see myself out now. All right. Let's say that a client brought me this guitar and they are complaining about just general buzz all around the neck um, and kind of like narrowing that down, problem solving. The first thing I do is tune the guitar to pitch. Um, so whatever tuning that they use, uh, get it tuned up and then I'll play around on it a little and like try to find the sections that they're talking about, like just to like try to narrow it down. But the first like main thing you want to look at is the neck relief. Um, if it, there's not enough relief, it's going to be pretty buzzy in first position, uh, buzzy notes in open position. Um, that's usually regardless of the action height. It's just kind of like what the neck is doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is check out the relief. Now, there are many ways to check the relief on a guitar, um, especially online, you're gonna find just like a myriad of options. Um, what we learned in school and like how like I started doing it is you put a capo on the first fret and then on the 15th fret, you're gonna rest your pinky and you're just gonna like tap right on the seventh fret. And the amount of space between the fret and the string on this seventh fret um, you can measure with a feeler gauge, which is used like in the automotive industry. Um, and there's thousands of an inch variables that you want to use to determine if your neck has enough relief or not. That is one solid way to do it. And it's totally workable. It's a great way. Um, I found that after doing so many of them and it just becoming an everyday thing for me, uh, I work in front of a, a giant window and I actually just tilt the guitar and I can look at the amount of light on top of that fret and in between that string, and I can determine if it has enough relief or too much um, back bow based on that amount of light. Uh, we will be inserting some photos here to show you like what that would look like, like too much up bow, too much back bow, just with like the reflection of the light on the seventh fret and the distance of, of that between the string. A sound is also like a good measure like for this. Uh, if it's dead flat, you're gonna be getting like a very kind of like plinky sound, like the string doesn't vibrate, you don't really hear a note, like that. Um, that automatically means that your your neck is, is back bowed. There's not enough relief present in the neck. So someone brings it in, it's buzzing all over. I check the relief first after I tune it to pitch. This one is dead flat, so I would immediately just give it some relief. And I usually do like a quarter turn depending on like how um, touchy this truss rod nut is. Sometimes like a quarter turn does a lot. Sometimes a full turn doesn't do that much. So on this one, I'm just going to give it like a tiny turn and like see if that made a difference. Um, keep it at full tension 
and keep it at pitch. And then you're going to go counterclockwise to give the neck relief on this Gibson style nut. I say that because on Fender guitars, it is the same, but on certain guitars, like in the neck heel adjustment down here, um, some dual truss rods, it's actually reversed, but we'll get into that later. So I just gave it a little bit of relief. I'm going to check. Yep, it's bouncing. Bouncing off the seventh fret a little. And that's where I'm going to start with this, this buzz, like trying to find the buzz all around the neck. If I play it and I don't find a lot of buzz, it might be time to just check the action and check your nut slot height and hand it back to the client and let them like, you know, try it out and see. So I gave it some relief. It's not buzzy. Um, it's not buzzing in open position. And then from there, I would set the action, double check your nut slots and everything. Um, and probably wrap up on this one. If you have a client or like somebody or just yourself even, um, that's experiencing buzz sort of all over the board and their playing technique is, you know, they're medium handed, heavy handed, and they're trying to figure out like what they can do because it's been set up before, it's still really buzzy. So what's causing that is that the neck is back bowed, the neck is going like this, and it's pulling in here and all of your strings are hitting this first fret in open position. Um, the nut slots on this are actually cut to proper height, which I'll get into later, but just introducing that much back bow, curve this enough to where those strings are all touching that first fret. Um, and that's what we're hearing with the like, like all of that. So again, if someone brought this to me and they were saying my first chord positions are sounding like, kind of that like kind of everything uh, like plunking out and that's going on I would immediately assume that their neck is back bowed and I would look at that and dead flat no sound just you're not even getting a sound off the seventh fret at all a little bit there but yeah this one is dead flat so even if we were to raise the action this wouldn't go away. Like you would still hear open position buzzing and first position, you know, just fretting out everywhere. The interesting thing is like, you still have clearance up here, but that's because the neck is diving and this isn't really affected as much. So this is a scenario where you have too much back bow. You have buzzing and open strings and first position stuff. It just sounds really terrible or awesome, if that's what you're going for. Cool. <laughs> so, now I'm going to introduce um, relief, get it back to like, you know, where the proper amount of relief, and I'm gonna go over some other buzzes we can find. In this scenario, um, I have a client who is complaining about buzzing only like in one section of the neck. I have checked the relief, the relief is good, the action is good, nut slots are fine. I know that it's something with one of the frets. So what I'm going to do, and this could be like, you know, your guitar at home too, this isn't like if you're in a professional setting or not. You want to pick one of these up. This is a Stumac fret rocker. Um, I love this thing, I use it all the time. And basically it has different edges depending on where you are on the board. So like if your buzzing is up here, you use the tiniest and if it's down here, you use the longest. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna just basically show you, you wanna rest it on frets and you kinda wanna rock it back and forth. And if the frets are flat, it won't rock, like it won't move. So I've picked a fret here that I know is a tad high and it's gonna do that. So, I'm experiencing rocking, so I know that there's a high fret. Um, just to like confirm that, if you slide it up, I don't have any rocking, and if I go down, I also don't have any rocking. So I know that this fret right here, the seventh fret is high. And let's say that's where, that's the only spot they're experiencing buzz. On this one, you don't really hear it. These frets are really tiny, but let's pretend that it's like super buzzy and really gross sounding. 
Um, that would require a spot level. Uh, you can level the fret and then recrown, go through that. Sometimes it doesn't require a level. You can actually look at the end of the fret and push it down with your thumb. And if you're able to do that, it means that the fret has become unseated. So with like compression and, and decompression of the neck with weather, sometimes the frets come out of their slots. And that is very common, especially on cheaper guitars or guitars where the frets aren't glued in during the refret process. So if it's something like that, I'll actually just leach like ultra thin super glue in there and hold it down and spray some accelerator. And then that fret will be level with all the rest and I didn't have to level it or crown it or anything. That's very common. I get that mostly in this area, again, on like cheaper guitars um, or older guitars or guitars that have been like refret a lot of times. So we're pretending that this one is really high. We've narrowed it down. We know that this fret either needs to be reseated with glue or it needs to be filed down and recrowned, and then they'd be good to go. So in this scenario, um, you're experiencing a lot of buzz up here. Like nowhere else, your open strings are good, first positions are good. You're not getting buzzes down in here. It's just like up in here, you're getting really plunky sounds and notes aren't ringing out. Uh, we've checked the relief, and the relief is good. We've checked the action, the action's good. Nut slots are good. Just dead in the water up here. Um, a very, very common thing um, here in the shop is like older necks, fender necks, they get what I call kick up. It's referred to as kick up by a lot of people. Um, this end of the board just sort of kicks up and it creates like a ski ramp. Like everything else can be flat, but like right here, you've got like a little bit of a ramp and your last few frets they completely cancel out anything you do in here. And if you're trying to bend, you're not getting clearance and it chokes out. This one is fine, but in that scenario, if you're bending and it's just choking out and you're like, why is it doing that? But it's fine when I don't bend. Um, that's usually the culprit. It's very common on seven and a quarter inch radius. Um, even when everything is set properly and you're trying to do bends, things are choking out because you're technically bending around a corner like a seven and a quarter radius is curved. So if you're looking at the board and the board is curved like this and you're pulling a string over that curve, when it gets towards the center, like in here, it is touching all those frets in the middle and that's going to choke out. It's gonna sound pretty, pretty bad. Um, and to fix that, usually you can't fix it by straightening the neck or by like raising your action and it's still gonna be there. I usually do a spot level up here and you would level with like a piece of cardboard or something. And as you're leveling, it's going on top of the cardboard and it's creating an angle where these frets are lower than these frets. So you have fall away. And to introduce fall away is like the best way to get rid of that. Um, very common. I do it on basses, acoustics. Adding fall away is very important. Um, a lot of guitars don't need it and you'll never run into it, but if you have a seven and a quarter inch radius, chances are adding fall away would save you a, a ton of headaches and your bends would be fine. So yeah, that's if this area is doing that, I would check with this, see if you have like maybe just like an unseated fret or like one of these is like really high and that's why you're, you're buzzing. But if they're all pretty good with the fret rocker, you just want to like look down the neck and see, is it kicking up? Or you can use a straight edge, you can put something completely flat here and see if it's making contact in this area and not in this area. And then that would require, require a, uh, a fret level and uh, a dress like everything. But that's another scenario for buzzes. Let's say your action is set fine, neck relief is fine, nut slots are fine. Um, you're getting buzzing in like certain chord positions, but there's like no high frets and there's no, you know, kinks under the string or anything. Just look at the frets. Sometimes there's divots in them from like years of use. And when those divots get too low, like I have a few on this one right here. Um, if they get too low, they will cause like a, a dead note and intonation issues and it will sound like a buzzing fret or like, you know, something like that. And the only way to fix that is, you know, with a fret dress, 
or um, like a refret that would fix it too. But that's a little less common. I get a lot of divots in and then I usually just recommend a fret dress right away just to like, you know, rule that out. But there are certain sections where like you'll see just huge chunks in the fret itself and like that's gonna be problematic down the road. Let's say that your truss rod has good amount of relief, that's all good. Your action isn't too low in general. That's good, like let's say you just had like a fresh setup and you're happy with it, but for whatever reason, your open strings are just buzzy, like super buzzy. What that generally means is that your nut slots are cut too low and that your strings are making contact with that first fret when they're in the open position. Um, there's a few remedies for that and I'll walk you through those. So if these nut slots are too low and these strings are buzzing in open position, but everything else is great, I would normally recommend a new nut um, right away. Get the nut slots cut properly. Give them enough clearance over that first fret. So yeah, if it needs a new nut and it's buzzing in the first position, nut slots are too low, a new nut is always the way to go. Um, it's the best fix for it. But let's say you're working with someone who's on a budget or they just need it for like tonight's practice or tonight's show. You can fill the nut slot and there's many ways to do this. You can use super glue and baking soda, baking powder. Um, you can use bone dust. I've had people just use super glue before. Invariably, that filled slot will fail in time. Um, if it's on like a bass string where like the string is grabbing through the nut channel as you tune it, it'll wear down that super glue and th whatever you use to fill it. And you'll eventually need a new nut anyway, or you'll need your existing nut shimmed, like putting a little piece of wood under there or paper to bring up all the slots. Um, that's another way to do it. Like sometimes if someone is on a budget or they need it done quickly, instead of filling the slots, because I know that like sometimes the string can grab the fill and pull it out and then they're back to square one, I'll shim the nut um, if that's what they request and like that's what we decide. Again, the best bet is just, just get a new nut in there and, and work with bone, like a harder material versus like super glue filling. Sometimes a guitar will come in and there's no buzzing on the neck, like everything's great there, but you're hearing buzzes on the bridge itself. Um, and there are a few culprits for that. In this scenario, I'm going to pretend that one of these slots for the strings, like this one had slots put into it a while ago, um, is too large. If it's too large, it's going to make kind of this weird overtone sound. And even if it's too small, it can sometimes just like rest in the channel on the saddle. And it just makes this weird like dead note kind of sound. Um, if it's too flat, you're gonna hear a sitar sound. That would be, you know, you can hear that specifically on acoustics, like it'll really sound like a sitar. Um, certain electrics, someone will file out a tunematic to change the radius or fix the radius. And when they're filing, they're just filing straight across, like they're just doing this instead of giving it a tad of a break angle. If it's too flat on any of this, it's gonna produce like a sitar sound. And if it's too big, it's gonna wiggle around and it's gonna give you like a weird overtone. And same if it's too small. So if it's like bridge stuff, I usually check first and foremost, is anything loose or like any of the adjustment screws loose because that's usually where it would come from. If not, everything's tight, everything's good, um, then I would look at every individual string and how they're positioned on the saddle and the bridge look for enough brake angle. If there's not enough brake angle and they're flat, it's gonna sound like a sitar. And then also just like check the channels. Do they wiggle around a lot? If you're bending and not hitting the note, do you hear it going like, like skating around in there? Um, that's another section of buzz that like, you know, it, stuff can buzz down here. Also, pickup height is huge for buzz down here. If they're too close to the strings, and you're actually like making contact with the top of the pickup or a pole piece with the string, that's gonna cause buzz. Um, sometimes if they're too, co too close, um, they can actually pull on the string a little and that creates like a wolf tone or like an over overtone that you don't really want. Um, so yeah, if you're hearing like just a buzz down in here somewhere, it's usually mechanical um, and it has nothing to do with the frets, the relief, the nut slots, the action, it's something mechanical going on and you want to track that down. 
Uh, same can be said if you're hearing buzz up here, like in your tuning machines and everything else is fine. Sometimes you have uh, like a loose bushing that's just rattling around. You could have a broken gear, you could have something just rattling around up there. And yeah, you usually don't want to plug in when you're looking for it. You want to just like hear it and knock on it, stuff like that. Like if you're getting a weird noise up in here, that's usually what's going on. Uh, it can be like, I've had loose strap locks or strap buttons before that are just like, that's where the buzz is coming from. And we've been trying to figure it out for like an hour and then we realize, oh, it's just this super loose and then it goes away. So yeah, you want to check everything that is mechanical that could be loose if you're hearing a buzz down here and then move on to brake angle, saddle slot, like is everything okay? And kind of narrow it down. A uh, really common buzz that I get from a lot of bass players is that their A string is making like a weird sound, like, like something like that. Um, the most common thing is that the brake angle isn't, there's not enough of that present beyond the nut. So you basically just want, basically, uh, want this string to be wrapped more than the others so that it creates enough of a break angle. So up here on an A string, I typically give it more wraps than the other strings and I will start at the base of the tuning post so that it continually wraps up and it, it increases that angle. So like if I go and I increase that angle, the noise is gone. Not enough angle, enough angle. This one actually has an A string um, attachable like a string tree to prevent this from happening. But I'm just saying like if you're hearing your A string and it just sounds like that, you cut your string too short and you don't have enough wraps to make that break angle or you have plenty of wrap but it's on top of the wrap instead of below like creating that angle. So yeah, that's a really common one I get on, on basses probably like one a week where the string is cut too short and we have to get a new string because we have to give it more angle to fix that buzz. Let's say you have an acoustic guitar and your relief is fine, your action's fine, your nut slots are fine. You're getting a really odd buzz somewhere in the body. Um, normally, the first thing I do is like shake it a little bit, listen for like loose cables. Like a lot of people when they install pickups, they let the cables kind of rattle around. Uh, a cable retainer will fix that right away. Um, sometimes there's like a loose cable retainer and that's flopping up against the soundboard. Uh, what I usually do when you're installing those pickups and you're tucking those wires away, I tuck them to the back of the guitar so they're not like projecting off the top and just creating unnecessary noises. Um, but yeah, you wanna like listen for that first, like shake it, you know, you don't hear anything, but you're still getting that weird buzz. It's probably a loose brace. To check for a loose brace, you just tap the guitar like this. This one doesn't have a loose brace, so you're not hearing the rattle sound, but you would hear like a like a not a good sound. And you would know that you had a loose brace in there and that's what was causing that weird buzzing. I've only done two repairs like this. Um, and that's like two repairs in probably the last seven to 10 years. You hear a weird buzz and it, feels like it's inside of the neck. Like you feel like something is vibrating within the neck. Sometimes the truss rod can be loose in its channel. Um, on the two that I've done, it's been Gibson style and you could like knock on the back and you could hear the truss rod rattle in there, either from the truss rod being broken or like it wasn't tight in the channel when the fingerboard got glued on. That's a really rare one, but like Sometimes if everything else checks out and you're going crazy trying to figure out and it just sounds like it's coming from like in your hand, like in this neck, it can be a loose truss rod. Um, remedying that, there are a lot of ways to do it, but that's a way to narrow it down to figure out like if that is what's going on. Another thing I want to talk about quickly is variables of buzz. So when things are buzzy, all the variables that come into play it's your action height, it's your neck relief, it could be your nut slots, but sometimes it's like player styles and if they're heavy handed, like if they squeeze really hard and they just, they're really aggressive with their playing, they're introducing more buzz. Um, it's their fret size, like if you have narrow tall or like a medium jumbo jumbo 
and you're squeezing really hard, you're gonna introduce more buzz. Um, reason being is you have, if you have more metal present on the guitar, like if the fret is, is big and you have more material and the string is hitting all that extra material, it's more sound, more buzz. If you have tiny frets, like these are like kind of like the zero fret, um, there's not a lot left on this one, but it's not gonna be as buzzy if you, you know, this compared to like giant new stainless steel frets and like heavy handed player. So sometimes I'll have people like play their guitar and I'll watch their hands and just figure out like, are they very like, like cranking on stuff or is it like more of a light, you know, light touch. Um, but yeah, fret size definitely comes into it. String choice, like if you have really bright strings, that comes into it. Coated strings, I've found like they are naturally like more plastic sounding in nature. So that with huge frets can cause a lot of just, you know, wolf tones or like over, just tones that sound like buzz, but it's mainly, you know, it's like part of that coated string. Um, so that is another thing to look for. So buzzing is a really wide topic. Yeah. And uh, that was quite the undertaking. Yeah. There's so many variables to consider. So if you get buzzing on your guitar, you're in for a long night is what you're saying. And, yeah. it, and if you're looking to diagnose it, you are in for a long, long night. Yeah, it's either gonna be in the first 20 seconds, you'll know exactly what it is, or you're gonna kinda have to go down the steps and figure out like, okay, it's only here, why is it here, why is it here? Incredible. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, as always, I would like to thank Wyatt Overman of Overman Guitars for um, making us all a little bit smarter and uh, helping us protect our investments a little bit better. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, leave your comments below. If you guys have any ideas for future videos, stuff you'd like to see covered, we would love to hear it. And um, I mean, we were talking about some pretty granular ideas earlier today, so you can't get too nerdy for this guy right here. So, oh, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, we'd love to hear your ideas. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also, there's a lot of really great information that goes out on the Stringjoy email list and uh, weekly, just weekly great info. So uh, until next time, I'll see you when I see you. See you later.